What does the month of November mean to you? For most, it's the kickoff of the holiday season. Things are going to get into full swing. Well, whether or not that's what it means to you, there is no doubt there is going to be added pressure. And whenever there's added pressure, the powerful part of your mind, known as your subconscious, wants to know what to do with it. Are you going to use it for the purpose of progress? Or is that pressure just going to continue to create more pain through the twos and the nots? Too many activities, not enough time. Too many bills, not enough money. Hey, we do have to deal with reality that we are seeing prices right now that we have not seen in years. So, no doubt about it. The holidays are going to produce pressure, but it actually goes beyond that. 91 days, 13 weeks of whenever I'm sharing this with you. It's going to be the end of January. Will you be moving into a year of your design or will you be giving up on your goals again? Well, what's going to decide that is what you're starting to do right now. See, it takes 91 days, 13 weeks, for what is known as an identity upgrade, where you're choosing what you're going to focus on. You're optimizing the emotions. We're not saying that the emotions are always going to feel good, but when they show up, you give them a purpose of what they are supposed to produce in your life. And that way, the actions you take will be ones that you can implement for impact. So most people give up on whatever goals they set between mid-January and mid-February, not having any idea that the reason why is because whenever they were in a time of extreme stress, that that stress wasn't converted into what's known as you stress, E-U in the word stress. Instead, it was distress, where they either tried to avoid the pain by numbing themselves out and then cycling it with overperformance, but overperformance for others where they have to pay the price for that other person's success. It's at their expense. And so where you are right now, well, that's based on what you've been doing the last three months, your focus, your feelings, your actions. It's your complete identity. And the reason why so many people don't get their goals is because their identity is incongruent. It is out of harmony with what they want to experience. So that is what we're going to be focusing on this month. We've already talked about in previous episodes about your programming. This is the mental level, what you were taught to focus on. Uh, Then we moved into emotions and how those emotions weren't given an outlet where it's an opportunity. Instead, the emotions just continue to present obstacles. And then Well, you were taught to solve problems instead of designing a life. I mean, face it, that's how you get promoted in life. Uh, Through school and work, how many problems can you solve? But personally, mm -mm, no, that'll keep you at the lower levels. That'll never move you into leadership. Leadership is where you take your brilliance and your magnificence and you showcase it in such a way that it absolutely lights up everything that you touch. Okay, so what you produce now will either propel you or it will prevent you come January, whenever you want to begin to experience a high-quality life. You will get the benefit of doing this work in November and December, no doubt about it, but it is really going to show up fully in three months. So what do we need to do? Number one, well, you need to pick the fruit for your identity upgrade. You want to look at 
uh, what it is that you want to produce. It's called Fruits of the Spirit. There are nine of them. I'm going to go through them. The healthy, functional side, as well as it can show, how it can show up dysfunctional. Now, when it shows up dysfunctional, that's phenomenal because it actually shows you what you're capable of producing because we have the law of polarity. The law of polarity says everything is created as a whole. For there to be an up, there's a down. For there an outside, I'm looking at my window right now, there's an inside. Whenever there's a pain, when given a purpose, it can move into progress. So fruits of the spirit, number one, love. This is how we bond to others. But it's dysfunctional when you don't know how to have a relationship. A relationship where you bring each other out at your best, and if there are problems, you either get kind of crazy together or you assist each other. You don't use your crazy against each other. What's the opposite of love? Indifference. You've been hurt so many times or so deeply that you've built a wall around yourself. And because nothing can get in to nurture and nourish, because when you build a wall, not only does it keep the bad stuff out, it keeps the good stuff out also. And then what happens is your heart gets hardened because nothing can get in there to assist you. And we're told to guard our hearts because out of it, the issues of life flow. And it's interesting. When that was written, um, the heart in the Greek was meant uh, as symbolism for the subconscious. The subconscious is where all of your habits and patterns flow. It is the storehouse of all your memories. It's how your emotions operate. It's the actions that you habitually take. It's the patterns that you follow. And because, well, there was lack of love. There was lack of bonding. In fact, the, the beautiful things about you were, were actually weaponized and used against you. Well, you built that wall and now nothing can get in that can actually assist you. We need to put up boundaries, not walls. All right, so that's love. Then we have joy. This is cooperation, gener generosity, compassion. But it gets dysfunctional when it's confused with happiness. We're genetically wired for joy. This is the reason why even in the midst of an overwhelming problem, well, we can still offer up our praise. Because we know that we will find a way with the support and assistance of others. Well, you know, it's said all blessings flow from God, but they flow through other people. So we, in the midst of everything, we can say, you know what? Yeah, we're, we're going to find a way to the other side. Happiness is short term. Happiness comes from solving a problem. And the, the greater the complexity of the problem, the longer it'll last. But ha happiness basically fades anywhere from 10 minutes to three weeks. Mm -hmm. You get that new car, three weeks later, you're already becoming habituated to it, and you're looking for the next problem to solve. And there is nothing wrong with solving problems. That's how you get promoted in life. But it does not lead to a quality of life. To do that, you need to design based on the fruit you're supposed to be producing. So what's the opposite of joy? Unbelief. Now, after age 13, your subconscious says, hmm, really? Do I want to believe anything else? Ah, probably not. That sounds like a lot of work. So I'm going to continue to build on the beliefs that I've already received. To be able to design your life, you have to give the subconscious proof of what you want to believe in. And that proof does not come through end results. It comes through discipline, consistent action. 
can you be consistent over those 13 weeks, those 91 days? Then you will develop the belief that yes, you can be counted on, you can be trusted because the part of you is going, wow, can I really trust you? You built a wall and you kept stuff out. And so now we can't cooperate. There's no generosity. There's no compassion for yourself. So happiness, hey, that's great. Um, you know, I really enjoy Thanksgiving and a phenomenal meal. And that will make me happy, but only short term. And if I'm relying on happiness, then I'm going to look for the next meal, the next snack, uh, the, the next amount of food to fill the void that it can't because you're looking for joy. And it's the same way with spending money. And it's the same way with empty relationships. Happiness is built on something outside of you. Joy is the fruit that you produce from within. Then we have peace. Nothing missing, nothing broken, wholeness. Now, it gets dysfunctional where we confuse peace with, well, sacrificing ourselves. What do we have to give up for someone else to be okay? Instead of working in that spirit of cooperation, instead of bonding in a way that brings each other out at their brilliance. The opposite of peace, pain without purpose. You continue to go through it again and again. People call it the comfort zone. There is nothing comfortable about panic and anxiety and depression. Now, I will say those three words that I used right there, the medical community will tell you that if you're experiencing those, you have to have medication. So instead of anxiety, emotional overwhelm. Instead of peace, um, that, or excuse me, instead of panic, uh, that's when we're attached to overperformance. Yeah. I mean, r- literally, the brain is on overperformance, but it's, it's doing it in a way that continues to hurt and harm. And depression, situational sadness. So I have to be clear about the words that I use. Am I saying that you shouldn't be on medication? No, everything has its place. I'm saying that you can bring out pieces of yourself that are laying dormant right now that can assist you in the achievement and the revelation of more at your healthiest. Okay, then we have patience, uh, perseverance and endurance towards a goal. Now, this month, one of the things we're going to be talking about is should you be enduring or should you be ending? Because sometimes we keep going on things that we need to close. But right now, we're just looking at continuing. Remember that 13 weeks at 91 days, and usually people give up anywhere between three days and three weeks whenever they decide to go after a goal. Yeah, we need 13. We need 91 days to develop that identity. And then month four, you get to reap the full results. I'm going to talk about that in just a little bit. The opposite of patience is when you feel like you have to be a sponsor instead of a support, or you need a sponsor instead of support. If this thing outside of me Um, could just tell me what to do. Uh, How do we get there? Quicker, faster, easier. Hey, I'm all for realizing who you really are that way, but the achievement of what you're going to produce in your life, it's going to take a little bit longer. You know, you can become disciplined with your workouts. 
And in three months, oh, you're going to be a heck of a lot healthier. Are you going to have let go of all the weight? Are you going to be at the physical fitness level that you want to be? Probably not. But you've produced the aspect of your personality that is congruent and harmonious with that type of health. And once the mind says, ooh, what do we need to do uh, in, in this area and starts achieving it, then it goes, how can we make it pervasive and spread this out to all areas? Okay, so what's the opposite of patience, rushing, pushing? trying to get to the end result before you've brought out who you need to be to experience that end result in a way where success is sticky. It's not just one time. It's not a you know, one hit wonder. It continues to show up for you. Then we have kindness. Kindness is an expression of love, especially to those who least deserve it. What it is uh, it on the dysfunctional side, it's being a people pleaser. And then the opposite is when you get passive aggressive, because when you're a people pleaser, oh, the anger about no boundaries being in place. And because of that, violations are taking place. And you think if you continue to give the best parts of you, they'll finally recognize it and want to honor you. And when they don't, yeah, you're going to get ticked off and it's going to come out in hurtful comments. It's going to come out in actions that will push people away because you're violating boundaries. Here's the challenge when this happens. There's what's known as regulation and dysregulation with our system. And when someone who is healthy and regulated comes across and spends any amount of time with someone who's dysregulated, only one of three things can happen. The person who's dysregulated, mentally, emotionally, and physically, actually starts to co-regulate with the healthy one, but only if the healthy one is strong enough to maintain their space and their place up at the peak. They give a hand up to the other person, not a hand out. But a lot of people aren't strong enough to be able to stay there. So what happens when somebody who's regulated comes across someone who's dysregulated, they wind up stepping down to their level. This is the reason why people pleasers, dysfunctional givers, wind up triggering dysfunctional takers within the person that they're having a relationship with even if that person came in healthy. And then the third one is they part ways. The person who's healthy stays healthy. The person who's dysregulated stays dysregulated. It's like two polarities that um, actually propel away from each other. They've got a part company. Then there is goodness. This is excellence of character. Wherever you go, there you are. Now, I'm going to say something about excellence of character. It doesn't mean that you're always this wonderful, wise person who just, you know, exudes um, puppies and, and kittens and beautiful blue skies wherever you go. Mm -mm. Excellence of character says that at times, you may have to stand up and go, this is not going to be allowed now. It may not be allowed ever. I'm drawing a boundary. And I can show you that boundary in a way that's very healthy. Or I can show you that boundary where I can get very assertive, which is still healthy. But in it's, it's in a way where I can be a bitch. Because if that's the only way you're going to get the message, that's the way I'm going to deliver it. So excellence of character does not mean you are a doormat. It means that you use your strengths. Strengths are what you develop after the bullshit you've been through in life. Talents, 
Talents are what you were born with and you're showcasing them without dimming your light to make someone else feel better at your expense. Abilities, there are still things to be developed about you. And gifts, this is what your higher power gives you in order for you to experience a quality life. You don't have to earn it. So goodness is excellence of character. It shows up defunctional. Uh, whenever you treat everything as a transaction, what are you going to get in return? Instead of an engagement, I give because that's who I am. And the opposite of goodness, well, it's deceit, it's denial, it's dimming your light. Faithfulness, staying true to your commitment staying true to your word, developing beliefs that are going to be beneficial for you and those around you. It's dysfunctional when your faith was not allowed to mature. See, whenever you were wounded when you were younger, that aspect of your personality froze in time. Now, it froze in time with what you believed the emotions that you were experiencing, and the actions that you were taking. And this goes back to the comfort zone, also known as the familiar zone. And it is this younger you that keeps getting triggered to act out in ways that are not going to produce the results that you want. So what do you need to do? Well, as I said earlier, the law of polarity you have the mature side of you waiting, but you have to give it permission to show up. And the opposite, the opposite is fear. Uh, we don't want to experience fear. But yet, but that when you set a goal, you set it out into the future. That means there is space and time between you and it. What are you going to fill that space and time with? The majority is going to be failure. You're going to be trying things that don't work. Failure is meant to show you how to refine who you are. But because you've been so reliant on passing tests and solving problems that, oh my gosh, failure means that I didn't pass the test. But remember, I said, yeah, we're to the point in our life where we're not relying on passing tests. We have to design our life based on brilliance and magnificence. And so you have to fail. And that's going to invoke fear. But fear is now given a purpose a purpose for progress because it shows you what needs to be experienced, how you can move forward using that fear and using that failure. I say, fail forward and fail faster. I will fail more in one week than a lot of people will do in one year because I'm moving into that growth. I don't always stay there. We'll talk about that in just a moment. There are times that I get to sit back and have immersion experiences where it is enjoyment at its fullest. And then it's okay. What else do I need to discover about myself that is going to allow my destiny to pull me forward? Okay, gentleness. This is where you're humble with compassion. Uh, no one does it on their own. There's something known as inclusion of self through others. And it simply means that the only way you can grow is by being in relationship with other people. But are you in relationships where you are co-regulating and you're moving into emotional intelligence, physical intelligence, mental intelligence? Are you spiraling up? 
So gentleness understands that we can't do it on our own. Uh, it's dysfunctional when you feel like you're weak and you're a victim, and then you get stuck on the drama, trauma triangle. When you feel like you're a victim, well, then there needs to be a bully. And you're pointing the finger at the bully and you're saying, yes, um, you're wrong. I'm right. And then you need a hero because you can't do it on your own. So you bring in a hero, but no one likes to be consistently in a one down position. And it doesn't take very long before the victim uh, begins to look at the hero as another bully. And now they get to magnify the victimhood by going, oh, and now this is wrong. You have to get off the drama, trauma triangle and you go into the Trinity that's going to take you to the top. And the Trinity is the younger you that holds all the energy, enthusiasm, and passion for life that got derailed by the pain that they went through that didn't have a purpose. Then you have your wise woman or your wise man. And this is the aspect of you that is calling you forward into a future of fulfillment, but they can't take their rightful place because it that position has been held by the younger you. So we have to work out an agreement between the two and then both of them operate every single day with every single heartbeat that you have to uh, to allow yourself to enjoy life with that enthusiasm with the younger you tempered through the wisdom of the knowledge and the revelation of who you really are okay so um the opposite of dysfunction of uh, gentleness is you don't need anyone and you can do it all by yourself. No, you will never grow without those relationships. But are you growing the drama, trauma triangle or are you go growing the trinity that's going to take you to the top? The, the number one universal law is more life. Everything seeks more life, but it can show up as growth or decay. Now, we are uh, the the way we're designed it's wonderful we get to choose what we want to let go of so we can embrace even more but when you get into a cycle of decay where you continue to let go more and more of you in a way that is not beneficial that's the pain without a purpose for progress and that's still more life Cancer seeks more life until it absolutely destroys the host. And then we have self-control, the final fruit of the spirit. And this is how you show all the other fruits. It is dysfunctional when your regulation is dependent upon outside sources. And then what you try to do is go into controlling other people, places, and things to avoid experiencing any more pain. Well, pain and pressure can go hand in hand when there's progress. What do I mean by that? So let's talk about, because these are fruits of the spirit, let's talk about the levels of how we go uh, through uh, germination all the way to seed dispersal, the life cycles that we will go through. Uh, the first one is germination. The seed has to be planted in an environment where there is water, where there is oxygen, and where there is warmth. And yeah, usually that's in the dirt, but there are such things as air plants that don't need any dirt, They, but they still have to have a level of warmth. Now, you need to know that when you are planting these seeds of the spirit and you're, you're planting them in your internal soil where warmth is going to be generated, did you know the way our soil is designed, it will eat away anything you put into it? Just think of what you put into the ground. 
you put in a wooden fence post that the soil is going to eat off the covering of the fence post. Why is that? Because it's actually been uniquely designed to eat off the covering of the seed, to take it away so the seed can then germinate in the ground. That warmth, this is the reason why you need to get into a relationship with somebody who is ready to co-regulate with you and extend that warmth based on the potential you possess. But in doing so, there's going to be some friction. Going to have to help you take off that outer covering, that wall that you've built around yourself that hasn't allowed anything in. It started as protection, but now it's one of the things that's keeping you stuck in a cycle of pain. So water is emotions. Um, Then the oxygen. What inspires you? Because inspiration means to breathe life into. This is when you start to discover your brilliance and your magnificence. When I work with my clients, one of the first things I will do is give them a test where they can discover the best parts of them because that's what we're going to be capitalizing on. And then that warmth. But you know, that seed, when it's germinating, it has to push through the dirt in its life. But we've given the dirt a new meaning. Everything that has happened to you previously is now going to trigger the best parts of you. Then the seed breaks through the the soil. And now it's in seedling formation. Still kind of wobbling. And it needs to take in nutrients from its environment. This is when we look at what triggers you. I was diagnosed at one point with complex post-traumatic stress. I don't call it a disorder. I call it an injury. In the same way, my arm was broken at one point by my dad when I was growing up. When it healed, it actually healed as the strongest part of my arm. So a couple of decades later, when I fell and put my arm out and dislocated my elbow and and messed up my shoulder, my rotator cuff. Nothing broke. And they told me it's because of the healing that took place a couple of decades earlier. So we have to take the triggers that would typically mean being hurt and harmed. And we now take those triggers and we give them an upgraded meaning that they're actually bringing out your strengths, your talents, your abilities. Then the plant reaches maturity, also known as differentiation, because this is when it produces its fruits, its flowers, its magnificence. This is month three. When you're like, wow, look at who I am. And then month four, a seed dispersal. Every plant is designed to produce more plants. So when you reach month four, well, then your powerful mind is going, wow, we want to produce new seeds. And we want to plant them in other areas. And then you begin spreading out your success. Maybe you started with your health and now it's moving into your finances. Or you started with your relationships and now it's moving in to your career. Or it's your leadership capacity. Month four, you will now begin to amplify the previous three months into other areas of your life. Okay, so what do we need to do to stop the self-sabotage and create the life you desire? Number one, 
Pick your fruit for your identity upgrade that you're going to be working on over the holiday season because you're going to be moving into pressure. Let's use that pressure for progress. Now, I can hear some of you going, but I want to pick all of them. And this is one of the ways that you wind up overwhelming yourself without realizing it on purpose so you don't have to do any of it. Just pick one. It will then move out and encompass the others. But start, let, let, let's take the smallest step possible and pick one. Number two, you need to optimize your environment for this growth, both internal, that's where you want to start, and then you move it into the external. This is the reason why I love combining hypnosis uh, as well as the coaching, because your subconscious mind goes by symbolism, not words. So symbols and metaphors and meanings, which is the reason why I've been using fruits and seeds. I've been speaking directly to your subconscious mind. You want assistance with this so you can reveal more of who you are? Well, then go to dawnlandrum.com. Click on the tab that says, I'm ready to work with Dawn, and you're going to see your choices there. And if you're not sure, then on the main page of my website, it says, hey, let's have a conversation and make sure we're the right fit for each other. Am I going to be able to give you a hand up? I promise you will leave that call with me with a tip, tool, or technique that you can use same day to begin to stabilize yourself internally. You will get relief. You will not get resolution, but you will begin to go, yeah, okay. Steps of making success sticky. And then step number three, begin to use this protocol at night. Uh, the last 45 minutes before sleep will be played out six times more in your dream state than anything else you've experienced during the day. Uh, so use this time to program your subconscious for more of what you want to experience. So look at your day and said, what did I enjoy? Because we want to begin to work with the fruits and all of those are enjoyment. Then you can ask yourself, what did I learn? And then, and by the way, when I do it, I'm having a conversation with my higher power. And, and yeah, we, we converse about this. Uh, and then number three of those three, three experiences I go through, what do I want more of tomorrow? And then allow your powerful subconscious mind to begin to work on that in a way that when you awaken, you're ready to experience even more of the gifts of enjoyment and wisdom. You're prepared for them because you allowed your powerful mind to, to take care of the soil while you slept. So until we get together again, time to use your brilliance and your magnificence, not just for the holiday season, but for the new year you'll be moving into. Use the pressure to begin to produce results starting today. <music>